During the spring and autumn period, and the period of the Warring States, China was divided into six states that often restored the war with each other in their struggles for supremacy. Warfare was the predominant way of life. In 221 BC, Chinese First Emperor Qin Shi Huang united China, built his kingdom. That's Qin Dynasty. Qin's culture and history affected China in a great deal, such as terracotta warriors. We still can see that in today's museum in China. And also, there is a, only one city connected to his name. That city named Qin Huangdao. Welcome to Travel Lock. My name is Chen Lei, and welcome back to our culture and historical series. Let's go to the experience Qin Dynasty through the Great Wall. The king of the Qin state, Ying Zheng, conquered the other six kingdoms through ten years of wars and brought an end to the Warrior State period in 221 BC. He built up the Qing Dynasty, the first unified, multinational, power-centralized state in Chinese history, by making Xianyang a city near today's Xi'an city in the Shanxi province, his capital city. Although Qing is a short dynasty with a span of only 15 years, it started. Of a 2,000 years long imperial history in China, and exerted a far-reaching influence on the subsequent dynasties. Qin Emperor lived from 259 BC to 210 BC. He was crowned at the age of 13 after his king father died. After Qin Shi Huang unified China, he made many tours of inspection around the country. He visited Hebei three times and once reached Qin Huangdao. Qin Huangdao, located in the northeast of China's capital city Beijing, it is about 300 kilometers between the two cities. Qin Huangdao got its name just because Emperor Qin Shi Huang once visited it. In Chinese, Qin refers to Qin Dynasty. Huang means an emperor, and Dao an island. The name Qin Huangdao in English means an island that Emperor Qin Shi Huang of the Qin Dynasty once visited. Except for frontiers in the west, southwest, and northeast, Qin's territory has been kept fairly intact up to the present date. For the past two thousand some years in Chinese history, the Great Wall has been destroyed by civil wars many times. But since the Qing Dynasty, as a matter of fact, they started to rebuild the Great Wall. After that, few dynasties, every dynasty, they rebuild, reconstruct the Great Wall. But among the history, Ming Dynasty had the best design of the Great Wall, such as the part behind me that's still left today. The name called Shanghai Guan, translated in English, literally means the post between the mountain and the ocean. North of the district Shanghai Guan is a famous Yanshan Mountain, and the south of it is the Bohai Sea. 
and in between the mountain and sea, locate its critical pass where the Great Wall post was built. The Great Wall in the eastern part of China was expanded in the Ming Dynasty. In addition to the Inner Great Walls built earlier and further south, Hebei has a total length of Great Walls as long as 2,000 kilometers. The enlargement of the Qin territory was aided by frequent military expeditions pushing forward the frontiers in the north to fend off barbarians' intrusion. The strengthening walls built by the various warring states were connected to make a 5,000-kilometer-long Great Wall, what is commonly referred to as the Great Wall. It's actually four Great Walls rebuilt or extended during the Western Han, Sui, Jin, and Ming periods, rather than a single continuous wall. At its extremities, the Great Wall reaches from northeastern Keilongjiang Province to northwestern Gansu. A number of public works projects were also undertaken to consolidate and strengthen imperial rule. These activities required enormous levies of manpower and resources, as well as repressive measures. Lao Longtou, a place where the Great Wall meets the ocean, the outstanding post at this area called Shanghai Guan, known as the first pass under heaven. Since the Great Wall is built by the military for the defending system, it's a protection wall. So the location is very important. For example, here it's very east side of the Great Wall. It connects directly to the sea, and the west side, called Jia Yi Guan, is built on the Gobi Desert. Here we call that Lao Long Tou. Translated in English is Old Dragon Head. Old means long time, long history. Dragon means power. Head, obviously, is the beginning. A large number of brick kilns for the construction of the Great Wall during the Ming Dynasty were recently discovered near the starting point of the wall. As of present, 48 brick kilns have been unearthed in Baichangyu Village, which is 28 kilometers from Qinghuangda. Experts believe that the kilns were used to make bricks for the Great Wall. They are the oldest kilns of this type ever to be discovered in China. Back 400 years ago, the Great Wall made by three major compounds mixed together is mud, sticky rice, and the rock. And actually, a few hundred years ago in Qing Dynasty, they started use some materials similar like that. And this is the final product. Based on the technology available at different dynasties, the Great Wall was usually built with local materials, mostly earth and stones. Natural terrain such as mountain ridges was often taken advantage of to form part of the wall. West Han Dynasty, for example, used sand and crushed stones filled with layers of reeds. Or tamarisk twigs to build the wall in grasslands and desert areas that are subject to strong wind erosion. This map indicates that Qing Great Wall is only a few hundred kilometers away from Shanghai Guan. Emperor Qin 
sent out his military, pushed Xunlu away from south of Yellow River to the north. Then used Yan and Zhao kingdom to rebuild the Great Wall and connected the two kingdoms together. The Great Wall is not just a wall. Other defensive works, such as forts, passes, and beacon towers, were built along the wall to house soldiers, stone grains, or weapons, and transmit military information. As a product of the clashes between agriculture and nomadic economics, the Great Wall provided protecting to the economic development and the cultural progress, safeguard the trading routes such as the Silk Road. Qin Emperor gathered hundreds of thousand laborers to construct the Great Wall. It took years with a civil and military force to build the wall. Many people spent their lifetime at the wall, and many myths stories happened at the wall as well. By then, almost one of every five people had joined the military, and one of every ten people came to work on the Great Wall. After China was unified, Qin Shi Huang ordered the members of the former royal houses of the conquer state to move to Xianyang, the capital city of Qin, so they will be kept under the tight surveillance for rebellious activities. Qin Shi Huang also unified China economically by standardizing the Chinese units of measurement. Such as weights, measures, and currency. The length of axles of carts, so every cart could run smoothly in the routes of the new roads, and the legal system as well. To avoid a recurrence of the political chaos of the Warring States period, Qin Shi Huang and his Prime Minister Li Si. Completely abolished feudalism. They instead divided the empire into 36 commanderies. Power in the commanderies was in the hands of governors dismissed at will by the central government. Civilians and military powers were also separated to avoid too much power falling in the hand of a single civil servant. Thus, each commandery was run by a civilian governor, assisted by the military governor as well. Serving the ancient Silk Road that formed the artery of trade and cultural exchange between East and West, the Jiayi Guan Pass was a solemn and a splendid landmark. The construction of Jiayi Guan cost a great deal in terms of manpower and material resources. The work gave rise to a number of strange and sometimes beautiful stories, legends that have come down to us over the centuries. On the red plain between the Qilin and the Mazun mountain ranges stands the western terminus of the 6,400 kilometers Great Wall. In about 2,200 years ago, one of the Qin Emperor's major projects was connecting the fortifications along China's northern frontier into one more or less continuous wall. The wall, as it existed, then only extended as far west as eastern Gansu Province. Oh, this is the famous post. This is Jiayun Post. And、uh, back then, inside is military station and、uh, the general living there. And outside is a market for people, you know, social around. But outside here, consider is outside of China, for only military can go out there.
The core city, or called the Tram City, is also known as the strongest fortress under heaven. Jiayiguan has been praised as an unconquerable fortification, for none can rival it. For all the praise accorded, Jiayiguan, in fact, is a fortress of a limited magnitude. Its inner walls are only 640 meters in circumference, with an enclosed compound of a bare 25,000 square meters. It is not only smaller than Shanghai Guan, but inferior in size to Jiayun Guan, Zijin Guan, Gubei Guo. And even some of the minor strongholds along the Great Wall. In its overall layout, Jiayiguan performs the dual purpose of attack and defense, being a battle-worthy complex consisting of inner walls, middle walls, outer walls, and mines, plus the Great Wall and a series of beacon towers connected to it. This is our original gray wall, made of mud back in Ming Dynasty. And this mud mixed with the straw is holding together strong enough, especially suitable for the weather here. It's so dry. Actually, it's not that tall because it's the inner wall facing to the city, and outside the another layer of the gray wall made of a brick. As the main component of the fortress, the inner walls are 640 meters around. 156 meters long on the eastern side, 164 meters on the west, and 160 meters on both north and south, making the enclosed compound a trampoline. Built of compressed earth and mud bricks, the walls are nine meters high. Their tops link to on the outer edge with parapets that are 1.7 meters high and. Perforated with observation apertures, the outer walls are surrounded by mounds and about two meters in width and depth. The mounds are flanked to the outside by an earthen dike about one meter high. In case the enemy broke the outer city, get into the court, then they would design the core city. What they do is they close both doors. Kill them right there. Used to be thousands of soldiers living around the wall and stationed here, protecting the country. And right now, it's become a tourist spot and so quiet. Let's really enjoy the quiet moment. If I stop the car right now, you basically can hear nothing but the wind. The beacon towers on hilltops often played a key role in military communication in ancient war times. Since the Great Wall has always been a military defense system, so the location of each post is quite important. For example, here, so-called the first beacon tower is built right on the cliff by the river. In ancient times, once the enemy passed towards the border, the signal from the beacon tower would be sent by beacon, fires, or lantern during the night, and by smoke signals in the daytime. 
the first beacon tower is also being called the most dangerous post on the Great Wall since the number one, actually it's the last one facing the west. So it's a very, very strategic location for the military station. Beyond the southern, northern and western sides of the inner walls stand outer walls, also built of compressed earth, whose southern and northern parts are joined on the western end of the Xilin Wall. At present, the general's office is only building inside the compound. The general's office located in the central of the inner city. The general who lived here had a great deal of responsibility to guard the west gate of China. During the construction of the Jiayuguan Pass, huge blocks of stone, each measuring 2 meters in length and 0.5 meters in width and 0.3 meters in thick, were in great demand. Builders cut the crude stones in the mountain. However, they were so heavy that there was no means to transport them over a long distance. By the arrival of winter, the workers had built a path from the mountain top to the Jiayuguan Pass. They pour water on this pass, which quickly froze. They put the large blocks of stones on the icy path, sliding the stone along it. In this manner, they got the stones to the worksite on time. In its overall layout, Jiang Yiguan performs a dual purpose of attack and defense, being a battle-worthy complex consisting of inner walls, middle walls, outer walls, and mounts, plus the Great Wall and a series of beacon towers connected to it. Inside each gate on the northern side is a smaller gate with a lower gate tower, which opens to a brick-paved sloping drive. 2.85 meters wide and 24.73 meters long, leading up to a spacious platform above the gate. On each of the square platforms stands a 17 meter high gate tower of three tiers. Each tier surrounded by corridors supported by red painted columns. One of the best ways to enjoy the world wonder is to drive along the wall on the Gobi Desert. There are some techniques that the drivers can experience and have fun with. The best time to do so is either early in the morning or late in the afternoon. The natural lighting can create various wonderful formats of the green wall. The last part of Jiayuguan is the main west gate of China. It is also the borderline between China and the West. Unlike the other dynasties in China, the Great Wall in Qing Dynasty is not only for military defense system, it also created many opportunities for trade between the East and the West. It is the main post of the old Silk Road. By tradition, soldiers and businessmen who went out of this post will drink three bowls of wine to show the respect to family and friends. During a long journey to the west, they traded tea, china and silk and brought back products from Europe and Middle East as well.
as a tradition back a couple thousand years ago. This is the last post for the military soldier get out of your hometown. You have to do two things. One, turn around, look back, look at your family members and your hometown. Second, pick up a rock. Throw the rock on the wall. Make sure you can hear the feedback. The sounds tell you, I will be back. In the next episode, you're going to see the hometown of the founder of the Han Dynasty, Shu Zhong.